and there's a screwdriver just sitting on the ground. Hi guys, nice to meet you if you're new here. Nice to see you if you're not new here. Welcome back, how's it going? Today, we are going through my five star reads. We're going through my five star reads today. We are also going to look at books that I think might be a five star. Oh, that's on my shelf. They might just be a five star. So five star predictions and we're going through my five star reads. These are about all of the five star reads I've had. When I go back on my books, I've had quite a few five stars, right? But when I go back on my books and look at all my five star reads on Goodreads and look at the ones I have rated five stars, I think, no, those don't give me a feeling or, or no, I don't think about those books anymore. But these books are books I think about all the time, whether they're in a series or whether they're standalone, whatever, whatever. I think about them all the time. I also have some that I've read on my Kindle. So let's take a look at all of my five star reads. We're going to start with some series. So starting with The Hunger Games, the sleeve's not on it, so don't mind that. <laughs> There's something in my eye. The Hunger Games, to start off with, the whole series is a five star read. I haven't read the last book yet, but we're just going to do the first three books. Five star all together. I absolutely love and adore The Hunger Games. I love the movie adaptation. I love the books. The books are there is just so good. If you didn't see, I've read these books and I've made reading vlogs on them. Spoiler, spoiler reading vlogs. And I just annotated the books. Peter's my favorite character. I think he's my favorite book boyfriend ever, ever, ever. Another series I have on here that's also a dystopian book is the Shatter Me series. I read these when I first started reading and I was like into reading, but I wasn't reading that much. And then this just set me, just set me up for reading. I went through these books so fast. And granted, these books aren't that long. This is just right over 300 pages, but they're just so easy to read. The writing is great. What's going in her mind is great. The little diary entries, Erin Warner. It's about Juliet. Her touch is fatal and she's in this little prison. The reestablishment though has plans for her. The reestablishment is like the government. And then she's learning about her strength and that it's not just a burden. And this series is so amazing. I actually plan on rereading it this year, the entire series, and I do plan on making a vlog for it. I haven't decided if I wanna do spoiler or spoiler free. I'm leaning towards spoiler so I can actually go into detail and talk about this book. I fell in love with these characters. I fell in love with the series. I fell in love with Tehita Mafi's writing. I, I love this book so much. And I know it's not for everybody. I know a lot of people didn't like the series. I know, a lot of people say, oh, the first book is boring. I didn't think so. Maybe it's because I started reading this. It was one of my first reads ever. The first line of this book is I've been locked up for 264 days. Why didn't that just, that didn't just hook you? That didn't just hook you in? I'm going to reread this series this year. I can't wait. Uh, just like a lot of people, I plan on rereading quite a few series this year. Some of my five star reads, probably a lot of them. If I'm being honest with you, I love it. Moving on, because I can talk about that book forever. The last series that we are going to talk about is the Chestnut Spring series. Specifically, it's Heartless, but I didn't pull that out. I just pulled out Flawless because it's the first book in the series. This is a five-star series. I have yet to read the last book, but I love this series so much. Flawless is the first book in the series. This is about a bull writer and his manager's daughter. He, the manager, he sends his daughter out to watch Rhett because Rhett is on this little thing of not being good or losing sponsors and whatever. So the manager sends Summer out to watch Rhett and babysit Rhett. And then, you know, from there. It's a fun story. My favorite one is Heartless. It's about a single dad and the babysitter. Elsie Silver's writing is really fun to read. I fly through them, especially because they're on Kindle Unlimited. They're on Kindle Unlimited. So if you plan on, if you want to read this series and you have Kindle Unlimited, but don't want to buy the actual books, they're on Kindle Unlimited and you read through them so fast. Love the series. Love it. So moving on to books that might be in a series, might be a standalone, whatever. We're going to start with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I love the series. I just read the third one for a different video. You'll be seeing that soon. Don't worry. But I just read the third one. This first one, though, is by far my favorite book in the series. Five star series for sure. But we're here to talk about this book specifically because this book is amazing. It's about Pip. Pip decides that she, for her senior project, she's going to solve a murder. Andy was murdered and it was said to be Sal, which was Andy's boyfriend. She thinks 
Sal wasn't the culprit. She decides for her senior project, she is going to solve this case, show that Sal is innocent and show who killed Andy. She discovers a lot. She uncovers a lot of secrets. That happens in the entire series where she's uncovering a lot of secrets. Each book follows a different kind of case, but it all leads back to this case. That would never be me. Could never be me trying to solve these murders. I can barely listen to a true crime podcast because I freak myself out, I scare myself, can't do it, but Pip can. There is also a small romance subplot. I wouldn't say super small, but there is a so uh, there is a romance subplot and it just gets larger throughout the series. But the main focus of the story is the investigations and solving the murders. In these books, it's not just like you reading. There's like transcripts and there's pictures of things that she finds or there's like audio recordings doing interviews with people there's so much in this oh like look like entries it it's so fun if anything read all these books that i tell you to read okay of another book that i've talked about before is faking with benefits by lily gold it is a thick thick book it is a thick book don't get me wrong this is a very spicy reverse harem book <laughs> something fun about this book that i think made me love it even more was there's a podcast in this book the boys have a dating advice podcast for whatever reason i don't know they're all single why do they have a dating advice podcast don't know but it's about Layla, who is having struggles finding a boyfriend, having struggles in relationships and dating and going on dates. So the boys decide, how about we be your fake boyfriends and help you learn how to date? But in exchange, you come on our podcast <laughs> once a week. You have to be on our podcast, fake boyfriends. And then it just, you know, turns into more. Then we have Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This book magic in this book the creatures in this book what's going on in her life in this book and she's learning a lot of things and you're learning a lot of things while you're reading this book king arthur retelling i believe she's a smart girl Bree's a smart girl she goes to early college she's at a college campus but it's for her i think she's 16 she's just smart her and her best friend go to this early college and they go to this party one night something happens at this party something a little terrifying happens at this party and these people a part of the Legendborn Society decide to wipe everybody's memory so they don't know what happened. But Bree's memory didn't get wiped. Even though they tried, it didn't happen. She realizes they tried to wipe her memory but didn't wipe it. And then she starts seeing these connections between her mom's death and the memory swiping. And she decides she's going to join the secret society to see if she can figure out what killed her mom or who killed her mom or if it was an accident or whatnot. So that's what this book is about. There is a lot of in-depth things in this book. It's not just about magic. It's not just about Brie losing her mother. It's about Brie finding her roots, Brie being joined, Brie joining the secret society, Brie going through the loss of her mother. Every time I think about this book, I realize so much happened in this book and I want to reread this book before I read Bloodmarked because I haven't read Bloodmarked yet for some reason, but I need to. I have a video on this book, my lowest and highest rated book on my Goodreads TBR. If you want to see me reacting to this book and more about this book, go watch that video. That would be really cool because I feel like I go into better detail with that video than I am going into detail now. But this book is about so much more than just the magic system. And I really love this book. I really think everybody should read this book, especially if you're into YA fantasy or just fantasy at all. There is a small romance subplot to this and I'm sure it's going to be a larger romance subplot and bloodmarked. But like I said, highly recommend this book. My last physical book on this TBR before we get into my Kindle books is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I've also talked about this book before. I love this book. I will be buried with this book. Bury me with actually all of these books. That would be really cool, really great. Thank you. They don't have a great first interaction and Jacob is a very anxious person. So he decides he's going to write her a letter. Leave her a little letter to kind of explain the situation, explain what happened, how he feels. And that's just kind of how they start. They start writing each other letters and it's really beautiful. This is the second book in the series, technically, but you can read them in any way. Part of Your World is the first book. But you will see cameos of the people in Part of Your World in this book. They're interconnected standalones. This is a really fun book to read. I can't wait to read more of Abby Jimenez's writing because I really enjoyed it. We have a couple of books that I don't have the physical copy for. The first one is Pen Pal. Quite honestly, I think you should go into this book without knowing anything because I went into this book without knowing anything and I was so shocked. The plot twist, I didn't guess it personally. I know some people do guess it, but I didn't guess it. I personally think you should 
to go in this book without knowing a single thing about this book. This girl loses her husband and she starts seeing things around the house. It's a little bit psychological, but that's all I'm going to say. She starts to see things around the house and she's calling these people to help her. And then she meets this other person. And that's all I'm going to say about this book. I love this book so much and I will be rereading it this year. This books I have talked about, I've talked about a couple of these, I'm pretty sure, in my favorites videos of 2023. The next two books were in my favorites video. So we have the Mindfuck series. It's basically about Lana who is a serial killer. She meets this guy. She starts hanging out with this guy but he's an FBI agent. He's working on Lana's case and he's trying to figure out who's killing all these people and it's her. But they're like falling for each other. It's a really fun read. It's um a five book series but all five books are mashed up into the one book. I will keep talking about this series. I love the series. I love Lana highly recommend this book please read it should i do a video of me reading my five rereading five star reads that'd be fun the last book on my five star read list that i read this not this year it is 2024 that i read in 2023 is out on a limb by hannah bonham young this story this story you're seeing them work through the ropes of getting to know each other and working through this next stage of their life together becoming friends and maybe falling for each other it's a great book and they're also going through all of these things together it's just so amazing i love this book love hannah bonham young can't wait to read more of her books recommended i'm sure that you've seen it on other people's five star lists because it was a great it was a great book those are all my five star reads uh ever some of them I read in 2023, some of them I read in 2022. But those are my five star reads. We are going to though quickly go through some books that I have on my TBR that I think are possible five star reads, five star predictions that I have. They're physical books because as you may know, I'm trying to get rid of, not rid of, I'm trying to go through my physical TBR before I start buying a bunch of books. I already have two books on the way. They were supposed to be here yesterday, but the weather permits and said no. But I do believe one of them will be a five star read, which is So Let Them Burn. I tried to pick five books that I thought would be five star read, and I only have four with me, but that's okay. Four five star predictions. The first one being Daisy Hates The Great Undoing by Jessa Hastings. I am a Daisy Hates girl. I'm a Daisy Hates girl. I loved Magnolia Parks, but not as much as I loved The First Date Hates. So I just think that this is going to be a five-star book for me. I love Juliet. I love Daisy. Then we have Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I really think this is only going to be a five-star read because a lot of people love this book. Not so much that I know what this book is about. I know this is a very deep and heavy topic book, but I know so many people love this book and love this series and I just want to be a part of the group. I just want to be a part of it. So this was on my five star prediction list. That's all I have to say about this book. I just know a lot of people love it and I'm hoping that I also love it. And I'm a follower. What can I say? Another book that a lot of people love is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. But I do think I'm going to love this book because I love a fantasy. I love an enemies to lovers. I also just love the promoting that she did and I just think I'm going to love this book. What can I say? Not much. Not much. Lastly, the last book that I have on this list of five star predictions is The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashim. An unmissable tale of shattered kingdoms, forbidden magic, and cunning royals unfolds in this Egyptian inspired epic fantasy debut. The premise sounds really interesting. The story I'm so excited to read. I want to pick it up really soon. Because I've been doing certain videos, this book hasn't been a part of those videos, but I'm hoping to pick it up at least in the next month or so, but I'm super excited to read it. And I do think this will be a five star read and I'm really hoping it'll be a five star read. These are my five star predictions that I have. And then we have all of my five star reads that I've ever had. Let me know what some of your five star reads were in 2023 or ever. I would love to know some of your five star reads. I'd also love to know what kind of books I should be picking up. I wanna have more five star reads this year. I feel like I didn't have that many last year. And I'm not a harsh rater. I would say I'm not a super harsh writer, but a five-star read needs to make me love the entire book. If I only loved half or three-fourths of the book, I don't give it a five-star because there were things that I didn't like about the book. So let me know some of your five-star reads. If you want to see what I'm reading in real time, go follow me on Instagram or Goodreads or both. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.